So you're a car enthusiast, and in general, you probably think that EVs suck. Now they're known to be a little floaty, they're known to be heavy, they're known not to handle very well. But what if there are companies out there that are making some suspension modifications that you can do to your EV to make them handle a little bit better and shift that heavy weight around? Enter Ultra Racing. Ultra Racing is known to make a lot of different braces for a lot of different cars. Cars you may not even think that they make them for. I decided to take the leap and order the front strut bar and two lower chassis bars in the hopes that I can make this thing handle a little bit better. So in this video, we're gonna install them and then we're going to review them. So let's go see if I wasted money. Let's open these up. This package actually came from Malaysia. I think it took like two weeks maybe to get here. So it's pretty lightweight. I hope it's strong. Little logos, it's got the Ultra Racing logo on it. It does say Hyundai Ionic 5 dual motor, four wheel drive, and Kia EV6 21 and up dual motor. Pretty sure these will fit the non-dual motors. Uh, so if you have the rear wheel drive, this should still fit. But um, the paint quality is good. The weld quality is pretty solid. It's pretty lightweight from a structural perspective. I mean, we'll see, I guess. This actually states dual and rear motor. So, uh, but this also says Genesis GV60. So if you have a GV60, this will also fit. This is definitely hollow, it's pretty hollow. Uh, this one says Genesis GV60, Ionic 5, dual motor, EV6 two wheel drive, and EV6 dual motor. The strut bar does come with these washers. So I assume we'll have to install these in, and add them to the hardware that's already on the car. attach right here and right there so we'll grab the bar and install it real quick I believe these are 14s This is done. I'm going to check the torque specs. Okay, here's the bar. Here is the back of the car. And basically what we're going to do, take off this trim piece and take off this trim piece. And actually on this one, I don't take it off all the way. I just take off the front and it kind of just sits back. But this one, you do need to remove all of it. We raise the car just a little bit because you have to actually support the subframe. You'll see in a second. So you actually need a 10 and a 14, preferably long on both. Yes. Okay, here we are into the car. Yep, so that one right there. And then there's one right here. So the bar will connect to these two right here. These are also all 10s. It's surprisingly easy to take this trim off. So now we're gonna use these jack stands to uh, support the subframe. So we are gonna use the middle of the subframe to support it with this jack stand. Oops, sorry. Well, I would yeah, know it. it's gonna go the other way, right? Yeah, here, you take that side. Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Yeah, so a quick fit test. So we're gonna go ahead and lower the subframe bolts, they're 19th, and then get this bad boy on there. And we're done with the with the input of that last clip. Now this thing's gonna handle like a spec Miata. Damn, it even pulls out like it's a race car now. <laughs> Stiffer. So we got the car jacked up in the front. And now we're gonna use this picture right here 
as a reference point to see where these uh, bolts will go. Okay, so is it these? So the pictures that they have on the website are actually reversed. So you got to look at the ultra racing rear to look at the pictures of the front. And then you look at the front for the pictures of the rear. So we got confused for a sec. So we took off this heat shield for no reason. We didn't need to. If you look back at that secondary piece right there, that's the one we need to take off. So we're going to put this back together. Okay, so we got one of the subframe bolts into the bar. But because we're jacking the subframe right here, I don't trust it to not fall here. So we're gonna go ahead and put a jack stand right here. <laughs> it looked crooked, but I know it went in straight. All right, man, we're good. There we go. All right, we are done. How do you feel? Accomplished? Accomplished. Man. What if it's like worse now? What if the handling is actually worse? It just sways everywhere. It's like none of this scientifically makes any sense. I don't know what I'll do if that's true. We'll f take them off. We'll Watch cut it just rocks even further. <laughs> it rolls over. Uh, all right, let's get this uh, down. All right, here we are. We are in uh, North Dallas somewhere with this nice long strip and we're gonna do a very scientific test, uh, very specific G-force measurements and uh, uh, we're gonna have graphic overlays and things like that to show you guys the impact of these bars on my EV6. We're actually not gonna do any of that. We're just gonna fly a drone and I'm just gonna drive like crazy and hopefully we'll see a difference in the before and after footage. If you're looking for a scientific measurement of how these bars are affecting the, the car, you're not gonna get that here but I'll give you my subjective thoughts and then I'll also show you what the footage looks like. Maybe there's a difference before and after. I don't know yet, but we'll see. So let's get started. Okay. So let me share my thoughts on these bars and what they actually did for the EV6. I don't have a race car all of a sudden. I was just kidding earlier and I'm not oblivious to it. Let me be very clear about what I do feel like it actually improved. And that is stability over bumps and uneven surfaces. I actually feel like I have a lot more control of the car as I take corners that might be a little bit rough. I feel like the car is a lot more planted. In that regard, I don't know how much body roll per se it's fixed i feel like there's a little bit but what i do feel and i'm not a physics major or anything is that weight transfer feels a lot better and i don't know if that's because the car is absorbing all the uneven kind of forces on each corner a little bit better and the best way i can explain this is if i show you guys the video of before and after now when you're watching this video you don't really notice that the body roll is significantly better you see a little bit what I want you to notice is the tire screech. Now, obviously, weather was at play as well. Even when I was going back and forth very, very aggressively, it was a lot more controllable with the bars on than it was before. And I feel like some of that is actually shown by the amount of tire screech that you're hearing on the before video versus the after video. So bottom line is, this isn't going to completely change the whole full dynamic of the car, but it does help a lot. And I think for four to $500, I think for all three bars, it's well worth the improvement because it does make it feel a lot more stable. Cornering feels a little bit better. 
And honestly, it just feels like a little bit of a better drive. And if that's something you're looking for, this is just another step of making it handle a lot better. Next choice probably would be coilovers. Not a lot of people are doing a lot of things to these uh, EVs because you see these bars listed, but you don't really see any feedback on them on what the improvement is. But my honest feedback is overall, I do recommend them because it does help overall stability over corners, uneven surfaces, and it does feel like it helps with weight transfer quite a bit. And on these cars, you could use every single little bit of help to control weight transfer. So that way the car feels more planted. So that is my overall review. I recommend getting these bars if you are interested. You can check them out at the link below, but if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks everybody. We'll see you guys next time. We'll